Right, beautiful. All right, welcome everybody, and good evening. Welcome to the Canada Virtuous Women platform. Good evening to those that are. Good morning to those that are connecting from Africa, Europe, uh, other parts of the world where it's no longer evening for them. It's morning. You all welcome. Thank you so much for choosing to connect with us tonight. Tonight we have an amazing, amazing vessel that God has chosen to bless us to begin our our year 2022. She is our first guest speaker for 2022. We are so blessed to have her. So happy. No stranger to us. Prophetess, allow me heavens. Welcome woman of God. Take it away. Thank you so much for this sacrifice tonight. Thank you. Morning woman of God. Happy New Year. Happy New Year. <laughs> It's such an honor to be on this platform again, to fellowship with uh, my sisters in the Lord, daughters of Zion. Um, I would like us to just say a word of prayer. I know we've been praying even before we started streaming, but uh, let's just quickly say a word of prayer. Father, Lord, we thank you. We glorify your name for you are good and you are kind. We give you praise because you are just good and you are kind. We thank you for that which you are doing within our midst. We thank you for that which you are set to do tonight. We say be thou exalted, O Lord, in Jesus' name. We declare, O Lord, that we will go beyond even my comprehension. We will go beyond that which you have thought of, which will speak to us expressly, O Lord, even directly, O Lord, in the name of Jesus. Father Lord, we thank you because you are here. We thank you because you're with us. Take all the glory because we know that you are preparing us even for far much more than this year. Thank you, Father, in the name of Jesus. In Jesus' name we have prayed. Amen. 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 Um, I must say thank you to the woman of God for the invite. Thank you so much. It's always an honor to be with the children of God, the daughters of Zion, um, because faith is permeable here. So I want to say thank you. And of course, to the other women of God, thank you, uh, Minister Derry. Thank you so much um, for all that you do. Thank you. Um, in fact, when you sent this invite, um, I thought to myself, this is the beginning of the year. <laughs> But at the same time, I said, you know, the Lord will have something to say to us all the time. God is constantly talking. And when I saw the woman, you know, we're women who fear the Lord. I love the fact that it's what I saw it there. And I know that in what we do, the Lord was talking about partnership with him and was, you know, and I kept just brooding over it. And what he showed me was, you know, the story of Esther. We know the story of Esther. If you check Esther from um, from two, you can start from that because I would really like us to just take time to look at that story. I won't take too much time dwelling on it, but even after now, I want you to go into that story. Why am I going into the story of Esther? Every man, every woman has a purpose. There is a divine purpose of God for our lives. There is a reason why we are here. And the Lord is constantly trying to help us to understand that it's beyond the family we have, it's beyond the money that we have, it's beyond what we are running helter skelter for. That's why the Bible says, seek ye first the kingdom of God and his righteousness. Every other thing will be added unto you. It's actually the kingdom that is our purpose. There's an agenda in the heart of the Father, but everybody has a place in that agenda. So many people, you know, we've come up with themes that the Lord has given us for this year, 2022, and everybody's looking for how do we stay within that will of God? How do we make this come to pass? For us, it's the year of fullness. You know, we are 1,000 this year in prophetic company. So many other ministries have their theme. Even families have themes that God has given them. But beyond this theme, the Lord is saying to find our position within this thing. We are people that work hand in hand with God. But what will God have us do within this year? How do we partner with God? I dare say that you cannot partner properly if you do not know what the will and purpose of God is for your life, where you stand, what he wants you to do. There is no two allow me heavens. There is no two minister Gary. 
There are no two of us. There is something that you are destined to do. If we look at Esther 2, I want us to, you know, go and read through everything. I want us to read it later. But in um, Esther 2, I have it open here. Okay, let's look at Esther 3. Now, if we go towards the end, you will see where um, Haman was talking to Esther. You know that there was something that was in the modern day would actually be maybe like a lie. Because when, modern, when they had to choose, when Vashti misbehaved mm -hmm. and they had to choose somebody, Mordecai told Esther, you know, her, her parents were gone. He took her like a daughter. He told Esther, don't, don't tell anybody where you come from. You're not supposed to tell them where you come from. Because as at this time, you know, they were not, they were not popular. Her people, tribe, were not the popular ones. Haman was already in the king's court. He already had the heart of the king. And they knew that there was danger for their own people. But Mordecai, being wise, knew that Esther was called for a particular purpose. Esther could actually save the people. If you read through the book of Esther, Esther, at the end of the day, most of us know the story, Vashti had to leave, Esther took over. A lot of us will pray, oh, let every Vashti, you know, on my seat, vacate the seat, and then let me take my place. But at the same time, we do not realize that it's not just, has God called you an Esther? It's not just Esther in his position, but what Esther means to her people. Uh -huh. Now, if we have gotten to the place where we now know our purpose. For her, it was to be in that strategic place to be able to save her people. So it wasn't about the luxury. She could have gone there and become carried away by all the fact that, you know what, I'm a queen. Imagine someone that is just a maid now goes up to become a queen. Do you know she has her own eunuch? She has guards. She has everything protecting her. The yeah. same way in the modern time, you might be in a sphere of influence where you have authority. You might be in the media. You might be in your own kind of business. But the question you should ask yourself is, why am I here? That's right. I think I've shared it on a few platforms that I remember when I was about 18, I would stand before the mirror and keep asking the question, why do I look the way I look? Why do I talk the way I talk? I think after asking myself that question for a long time, it came to my spirit that it's probably because of where I'm going. My destiny has to be able to recognize me. That's why I don't look like anybody else. That's why I don't sound like anybody else. That's why I don't think like anybody else. The same question I will put to you today, where you have found yourself, what is the purpose and the agenda of God? Why are you there? If you are smack in the will of God, in the center of the will of God, if God has truly called you to be where you are, what are you supposed to be doing there? This year is not a year that will just play just, you know, your sphere of influence will just play ministry, will just play church. There is no mistake. If you've been sleeping before, it is a season for you to get up, just to rise up and ask the father, why am I where I am today? What would you have me do within this sphere of influence? If you read further in, in the book of Esther, you realize that when Esther had been placed strategically there, even before she was placed strategically there, God put that Mordecai in her life to ensure that he could advise her. She in herself probably didn't even have an idea that she could get there. Apart from that, she didn't have, it got to a point where Mordecai spoke to her and said, you know, she had to realize that this is where you are supposed to be and this is what you're supposed to be doing. Because don't be comfortable there. Don't be comfortable. Because if you are comfortable, they can take your people out and even take you out. Yeah. But Mordecai was set up there to advise her, even to what she had to soak herself in, to ensure that, you know, she was admired by the king. But a lot of us in this season, we, we, we have not gotten to the place of partnership. A partnership that will let us know that, okay, you know what, this, this is the person that is supposed to advise me in this season. They might not be all that throughout all the seasons of your life, but who is the Mordecai that God has put by your side in 2022? That person might not be the, the person you think, even in your heart. And that's why we have the Holy Spirit. That's why we need to get to the place of inquiring from God. There are some people that within your sphere of influence, they might not look like it. Mordecai did not look like it. He was at the gate. I mean, this wasn't someone that you would, you would just invite to the king's palace. But he was the person that had to advise this queen. 
And beyond his advice at that point, imagine, you know, she could have gotten to the king's palace and decided that, you know, Mordecai, you know, this is not my type anymore. I've outgrown you. Mm. And when Mordecai had to be there to ensure that she still remembered what she was supposed to do and take the place, the posture of prayer to ensure that the people were not, you know, just removed and totally cleared out by him and he would not have been there. She would have slept up on slept off on that place, thinking that she has arrived. Because it happens to the best of us. Where you think, oh, I'm there now, whether it's a ministry, we've been doing the same thing. So I mean, God is speaking, and you don't realize that there's another turn or a curve, or you are you are asleep. Mm-hmm. So I think one of the things we need to do this year is ask the Lord to open our eyes to see every Mordecai that God has put in our lives. Those ones that we've shunned, because God is talking about the place of partnership this year. If those things, if we have by any means, maybe by our own foolishness, by the Mordecai's mistake, you know, because people will always be people. If we have done away with them and the Lord will have them come back, then let us seek mercy. Let us ask God in his mercy, not only to open our eyes, but to restore those people into our lives. Mm. Beyond that, <laughs> The queen did not get to a point where she said, you know what, I will not fast with the people. You people just go ahead and fast. After all, I'm the queen. She got into the place of partnership with her people and with God and fasted and prayed also. And then, of course, we know the story how at the end of the day, Mordecai (laughs) Mordecai (laughs) was placed in the place of authority. The people, of course, were going nowhere. They became dead to the heart of the king, just as Esther, a queen. Esther was also dead to the heart of the queen. Now, why am I saying this? There's a lot to learn in the book of Esther. If you take time out and read the book of Esther in itself, you will realize that this is a purpose-driven person, a divine purpose-driven person, not just a purpose for yourself. And the year 2022 is in partnership with God and in partnership with graces and those people that God has called to ensure that your life is on track and you are smack in the center of the will of God. Part of why I'm saying this is because you can't afford to make a mistake. For people who know we are fasting because, oh, in January, it's not because it's January. If you have the ear of the spirit, you know in this January, <laughs> you have to take January to seize the rest of the year this year. If you have been playing with the beginning of January, please wake up today. Take that fast, pray like your life depends on it. You know, when God speaks, the spirit of the Lord is one. I remember, you know, beyond our own fast, just going to, I think I came across a post of a man of God and he was talking about how the Lord spoke to him about how you mean to go in the rest of this year is how you should take January. He says, pray, fast and give, which has been what we've been doing. Pray, fast, give. Pray, fast, give. Because God is said to do something. There's a catching up in the spirit for the children of God this year. And you're not going to do it by your own strength. You're not going to do it by your own might. You're going to do it by divine unction. God is aligning graces. It's an iron sharpness, iron year. It's not a year of the lone ranger. Esther cannot guess to the palace on her own. Esther needs a Mordecai. Mordecai cannot live where he is on his own. He needs an Esther. The people cannot survive on their own. They need an Esther and a Mordecai. They need the king. So this is that year that you need to be in partnership with the father. And I love, you know, I talk about prayer a lot because it's one of the things that the Lord has been speaking about constantly. And it's a season where the Lord is calling his people to pray. There is no way that you will be in partnership with God and you will not pray. The Bible says men ought to pray always and not faint. A lot of time we hear this scripture and then you still hear people say, um, you know, because of the finished work of the cross. Yes, we know that the work is finished. He said it's finished. We know that. But you see, even this Jesus that we're talking about prayed. Jesus could have come to this planet and decided that, you know what? I am the word made flesh. I have a right to just call angels to do everything. But you see, Jesus came to be an example for us. The Bible says these are types and shadows. 
Jesus came to be an example for us. And Jesus by himself prayed nonstop. Why? Because he's on earth here and he needs to show us practically how he needs us to walk. He needs to show us practically how we can thrive on this earth as men. So when the Bible says men ought to pray always and not faint, there are so many things embedded in it. If you are praying people, you will realize that the supernatural is a natural terrain. And this year, you need the supernatural like never before. You need hearing ears. You need seeing eyes. You need the spirit of discernment. Amen. The times are no longer the times that it was when it was five years ago. Mm-hmm. You realize that if you really discern properly, this is not how the world was in 10 years ago, like 10 years ago or five years ago. Everything is changing rapidly. You really need the spirit of God. You need direction. You need discernment to ensure you know how to, you know, how to maneuver, what to do, how to do it, how to respond, wisdom. Even within this season, God has given us a lot of us templates of our lives. Some of us know what we're supposed to be doing, but the power to do it lies in prayer. Mm-hmm. When the Bible says the Lord is looking for a man to stand in the gap, he says so that he will not destroy the land. Imagine, God is angry. This is how I always like to put it. Imagine you're having a fight, and they do it a lot. If you live in Nigeria and Lagos, when these area boys are fighting, <laughs> you see two people fighting, and they are still bouncing around. You're wondering, if you're going to fight, fight. <laughs> The honest truth is that a lot of them are waiting for you to stand in between, you know. When you're not standing between and say, I don't fight, don't fight. That's when you see them jumping and say, let me beat him. I will show him. And you're like, and I saw a video years ago where the person told a friend, you should have stopped me. By the time the fight went down, I said, no, but you wanted to fight. We kept shouting, don't fight. (laughs) Now you're saying we didn't stop you. That's what God is doing. He wants to destroy them. He's upset. Yes, he's saying, Minister Gary, I'm waiting for you. Stand in between so that I don't destroy this land. Can you speak to me on their behalf? Like giving you a chance to really speak. Now, beyond even your personal life, there's the family, there's nations of the world where God is waiting for you to stand in the gap. We are women who love God. We are women after the heart of the Father. So the heartbeat of the Father should be what we are after. And if we want to be able to respond to the heartbeat of the Father, we have to stand in the place of prayer. We have to be able to stand and pray. If we look at you know, a lot of the Matthew accounts where they were talking about the you know, five loaves of bread and, and two fish, my people, this kind of miracle will happen in the life of Jesus. He fed these people. There were 12 baskets remaining. Please, did he go back and just relax? Mm -hmm. He said after that, he went aside to pray. He went where? Aside to pray. Because it was not a season to just rejoice. It was a season to do more. He knew that there was more in the heart of the Father for him. And so he decided, you know what? I'm not just going to play with this. I'm going to pray. So he went and said, you know what? Just let the disciples go. The disciples went on their own boat and just went away. And then he stayed back. This is Jesus Christ, the word of God. He stayed back just to pray. And when he did this, a lot of things happened. I remember, I think, a meeting we're having this morning where, you know, Reverend Opera was talking about the fact that you do not see tangible, you know, manifestations of the miraculous when people don't pray. It's not like you can't sit and say, you know, this is the word of God and you keep declaring it. Of course, it's part of it. You can't do without the word of God. But the fact is, you have to get to a point where even with the word of God, you are just declaring. You are declaring. You are declaring. I hope you can still hear me. Yes, very well. Okay, thank you. You know, you just keep declaring the word of God. And why are we declaring the word of God? Beyond even declaring the word of God is the part where you need to pray, even in the spirit. You are praying in the spirit. You are praying in unknown tongues. The Bible says, he that speaks in tongues, he edifies himself. He speaks mysteries. Yes, he says, um, if, you prof- if you prophesy, you know, you edify the church. But he, that doesn't take away from the place of, of just speaking mysteries, of speaking mysteries, just speaking, keep speaking before the Father. Now, why am I saying this? We need empowerment for this year. 
we need to pray like never before. Mm -hmm. We need to come to the point where, like Jesus, if we look at the account of Matthew 14, you know, he spoke about, this is someone that, you know, John had just been taken and beheaded because Herod wanted to please his daughter. But beyond just pleasing his daughter, Jesus heard of what happened, but he still went on in verse 13 of Matthew to start doing miracles. This is where he fed the people. He fed them. And then after feeding them, he went to pray. Why did God do this? God, even Jesus himself knew that beyond this particular time, we would also be reading the scripture later on. And he's telling us this is the way to go. In this year, we're not going to be docile Christians. We're not going to be nominal Christians. We're not just going to be followers. I'm not saying there's anything wrong with you know, followership. You have to, to follow because even the Bible says that who will commit your, your own stuff into your hands if you don't, you know, if you are not faithful with, with that of others. That means if you, you are not following well, you're not helping others carry their burden, who will hand, you know, hand over yours to you? But within this season, it's time for us as individuals to get up. I always say this, even amongst the gatekeepers, that the strength, we are as strong as our weakest link. Yeah. I should be able to relax and know that there's another sister who is after the heart of the father, who loves the father and is smack in the middle of the will of the father, who is prayed up, who has eyes and ears that can see what I cannot see and even lift me up before the father if I need to be lifted up. Yeah. This is not the season of superstar Christianity. It's not the season at all where it will only be Pastor Adeline, it will only be Minister Gary, it will only be Prophet Heavens, it will only be Apostle Heavens, and you are waiting for the word. It is the time where you need to get up fast and pray. Yeah. Fast and pray. If you forget anything this year, it, don't forget fast, pray, generate energy. He said, except through fasting and prayer, there's some things that can be done, except through fasting and prayer. You've waited this long. You've waited for so long. But do you know that you get to be in partnership with God to make things happen? Jesus, after having gone to pray a lot of times, that's when you see miracles like, oh, he, he caught up with them on the sea. They had long hours ahead of him. Jesus caught up with them. He walked on water. Was Jesus praying, oh, let me walk on water? No. He was praying and praying before the Father because there was a lot to be done. But God knew he had to catch up. He had to catch up with the, with the disciples on the water. But mm. you think about it. This, this Jesus got on water. They had gone for hours. Please, was he running when he caught up with them? They said it was, they were hours ahead, right? Yes. While the storm was shaking them. But Jesus left the shore and then he walked. Let's be realistic. As they would say, let's be logical. Mm. He gets on water and is walking. Please, how did he catch up with the boat? Yeah. The same thing played out in the time of Elijah. Elijah was not praying about, oh, let me run faster than chariot. Elijah was praying for rain. But you see, in the place of prayer, he says, when you pray, yeah, the, end, the fervent prayer of the righteous, some say the earnest, fervent, continuous prayer of the righteous, availed much, right? It makes, power, it makes power available, dynamic in his workings. I'm paraphrasing here. Now, I'm praying, I'm praying, I'm praying. Energy is generated, dynamic in his workings. That means, okay, my prayer point today is, let's say, Canadian virtuous women. I'm praying, Lord, establish her, establish her. Manto Rabi Kasunta, Indokonda Riba Kasia. If I sit here for the next three hours, praying for your platform, the power I'm generating is, is, you know, is dynamic in its workings. So while I'm praying for you, I'm still generating power that can be shaping things in my life. Yeah. And that's what most people who do, don't intercede, don't know. When they call you into a place of intercession for people, you are, so, you are still at the point of, I you know, and eat, drink, you know, my business. <laughs> It's not a season to be selfish. If you had been joining people to pray and scabash all this while, you would have generated power like never before. Mm. You would just realize that you are mounting up on wings like ego. You don't know why, because you have not even prayed for that situation. And you, and you just turn to your own situation and you declare, loose your hold, and it loses. It's because you have made energy available. Mm. 
Elijah was praying, rain, rain. This rain, was it the rain only for Elijah? It wasn't for Elijah. Yes, he would benefit from it, but the other people were there who would benefit from it. The farmers, the people who were, you know, doing different things, their own business, the people who had to have their bath, drink water, would benefit from it. Elijah prayed this too. He didn't say, you know what, let us all gather and pray. And even if he called them and they didn't gather and pray, he would have still prayed. But he didn't just declare it. And I want us to hear properly because a lot of us have promises for our personal lives, for our nation, for our family that have not come to pass. And we sit down there still saying, what will be, will be. I had an interview of recent and I told what will be, will not be. <laughs> it will not be. Let's not deceive ourselves. Beyond the time of, let's not pamper ourselves. We are daughters of Zion. We are, we are sons. Not, we are not children. Yes. What will be, will not be uh -huh. if you don't stand up. When he says, I'm looking for a man to stand in the gap so that he will not destroy the land. If he found no man to stand in the gap, he would destroy that land. And then you will now be talking stories about how, how can God do that? How can God... I mean, he waited for you for a long time to stand up. The same thing, you've been hearing promises. Maybe your parents told you about promises that the Lord gave them. You know, the Lord said this, but it's not come to pass. Your mom is saying this, your dad is saying that. You know, that's how they told our father too, that he will be great and he will help the church. But he's, he's nowhere to be found. The question is, what did you do about it? He gave you this earth. He said, take dominion. He said, you should subdue. Do you know what it means to subdue? Subdue is not just go walls in and it subdue to subdue something means that thing will not just yield to you. Yeah. You know, horses, those wild horses. Have you watched those movies where they have to break horses when they are trying to break them? It's that horse is doing everything it can to throw them off to ensure that, you know what, you have to get off my back. I'm not going to be tamed, but that person stays with it until they can break that horse. They say they break it. That means you must submit to me. And that's what God has called us to do. We are supposed to be in partnership with God. If we're in partnership with God, we will pray things, things through. And I think the mistake a lot of us make is that when we generate energy, when we pray, we don't stay long enough to see it happen. <laughs> we just get to the point of, you know what, I'm tired. My body's tired. Let me go. I will do it again next tomorrow. When, when the Spirit of the Lord is waking you up, that don't sleep. Don't sleep. A lot of people have been... Have you not been there? I've been there before. Where the Holy Spirit will wake you up and you're like, you know you're supposed to pray or you're just restless. You don't know why you're up. You start looking for one work or the other to give yourself. And maybe, maybe I should just watch a movie. Maybe I should just, maybe. And the Holy Spirit is trying to just ginger you, as my people will say, to pray. To just stay in the place of prayer and just pray it through. And so this year, we're going to pick up promises. The promises of God for our lives. We will not sit there and wait for them to come to pass. What are those promises within your lineage? What are those promises within your personal life that you need to see come to pass? If you indeed need to see them come to pass, this is the season where you will stand up and start praying it through. Start praying it through. Like Elijah, you will pray till you see that fist. You will pray. Imagine if he was praying for the next seven hours, he, one time, maybe he prayed for one hour. He said, go and check. He prayed for another one hour. Go and check. Pray for another one hour. Go and check. Imagine if he gave up on the sixth time and just said, please, please, I'm a prophet. I declare it done. It's done. <laughs> yeah. They will wake up next year. They'll still not be read. And they, they will now go and say, powerful man of God. But you said there will be rain. You said we should eat and drink. Now we've eaten, we've drank the last water. And there's no rain. But he prayed till he saw something. He saw that fist. The same thing the Lord will have us do. And the question that a lot of people will ask is, um, how long does it take? It will take as long as it will take. That's why we have the Holy Spirit. What you are battling is different from what I'm battling. For some people, their parents have prayed through to even 5 a.m. in the morning in their lives. So they don't have a lot to do. So they start to declare and pray. And it just happens now. And you, your family, your lineage is still in the stone ages. You are the first one that is coming out to deliver this place. You know that you have to be at that wall. You have to be that watchman to stand to pray through. So this year, please, is not a year of just saying, no, this is a year of our, of our fullness. You will partner with the Father to cause that fullness to come to bear. 
you will partner with the Father to make that fullness happen. You will call forth all those things that he has given to you and he will call it forth. You will build up yourself. Sometimes, you know, the Lord has sent you to a particular place. Imagine the scripture saying that, you know, so you, you, you get to the place of delivery and you don't have strength to put to birth. That means there's a possibility that you are pregnant and you can't, you can't give birth. You can't put to bed. Why? Because there's no strength. It takes a lot of strength to push. Yeah. And remember, you have been pregnant for a whole nine months. And so you are tired. You just want it over. And then you get there, you can't push. So you hear people, they say, oh, push, push. A lot of people say, I can't. I can't. I remember, you know, being a first-time mom, and they were like, you know, you just have to summon courage. But in my own heart, I was like, forget it. I'm not one of those people who will not push. <laughs> I want this over. Because what must be, it must be done. You understand? So I've been praying for strength. And Lord, give me strength. I needed that strength. See, that whole, whole birthing experience was a, a testimony in itself. But you see, that means if there's a possibility that you can get to that point and not give, you know, have strength to give birth, shouldn't you do something about it? Shouldn't you gather strength? And we're talking about spiritually now. This is spiritual. Uh -huh. So shouldn't we gather strength in the place of prayer? You might tell yourself, I pray. We've been praying in our family. When you see prayer, you know that you are not praying. There's yeah. always a next level of prayer. Always a next level, depending on what you are called to do. Uh -huh. yes, sometimes you tell yourself, you know, I, I can't fast. I can't really fast. You know what? Let me just do it to 12. And the Lord told me, he said, for some people, for some people, <laughs> that's what has been holding you back. If you can't surmount those things in your life, like some people were fasting and they said the Lord told them to stop, you know, chocolate. Some people said the Lord told them to even stop coffee while fasting. Why would the Lord say that? Do you think your chocolate is disturbing him? No, but he wants you to rule over it. He sees that he's taking so much of your heart and your time. He wants you to give it up for him. So in this season, I just want to encourage us to stand up in the place of prayer. If we truly are women who love God following, we have to follow him by praying earnestly and fervently, by ensuring that things do not just happen by happenstance, that we orchestrate these things, that we partner with the Father. For some people, the things, the wickedness in your household is waiting for you to deal with it. Is waiting for you to deal with it. But you are waiting for God to deal with it. And God is wondering, Adam, I've given you the garden. I said, tend it. Imagine Adam waiting for God, that God will call him, come in the cool of the day. Let him come and tend this thing. Let him just say, speak a word and will, the garden will be tended. Do you think God will do it? God won't do it because God already prepared the garden for him and gave him the commandment. If you like, let the animals run riot. God said, name the animals. If you like, don't name it. Leave it. Do you understand? Yeah. What you what you do, what you decide to take care of, is what will be taken care of in this season. Mm -hmm. So it's a season for you to rise up and decide what you want to see in 2022, what you want to see in your sphere of influence. And the way we generate energy is by praying, speaking the word. Mm -hmm. You know, a lot of times we see examples in scripture. Like I said that, you know, if you had prayed to a particular time and you leave it, I think I've shared the testimony on this platform before um, that some years ago, I think maybe, maybe about seven or eight years ago, that I think it was seven, was it seven? I think about seven years, because my son will be eight. And I remember just having this thing, this thing brewing in my spirit that there was something wrong. And that is part of what I'm, I would like to encourage us about. Don't wait till you see it in a dream or you see it you, you know, in a vision or you hear it. Your spirit has senses. Yeah, I just felt like something was wrong. And honestly, I looked around, there was nothing wrong physically. Nothing that I could see that I could place my hand on. You know, my husband had gone to Abuja then for a few months on ministry trip. And I was in Lagos with the children. And I remember just praying in the spirit because I didn't even know what to pray. That's why the Bible says that we don't know what to pray as we ought to pray. But the Holy Spirit helps us in our infirmity. He helps us. He helps that weakness of ours. 
And I started speaking in tongues. I was like, whatever it is, I started kabashing. I'm sure my daughter was wondering that what was happening. I just kept speaking in the spirit. Second day, this urge had not gone. You know, I could have given up the first time. I said, I prayed, I prayed. Because I prayed throughout the day. I was just praying, walking around the house, praying. But this thing did not let off. It was as if danger was closed. Something was wrong. But I didn't know what it was. I kept praying. The second day, I kept praying. I kept praying. I kept praying. I kept speaking in the spirit because I didn't even know what it was. I remember calling him, calling the apostle and telling him that there's something wrong. He says what? I said, I have no idea. But there's something really wrong. And I've had this feeling since yesterday. I prayed through yesterday, but I still have that feeling something is wrong. He says, okay. He declares, he's like, okay, uh, just keep praying. I keep praying, thinking, okay, by night, second day, it will let up. It didn't let up. I kept praying. The next day, I remember it was my mother's birthday. So I went to um, her house and my siblings were there. I remember pacing around, just speaking in tongues. And they were like, ah, mama, sit down now. I said, mommy, I can't sit. There's something wrong. She said, what? I said, I have no idea, but there is something really wrong. And she said, okay. She said, I kept praying. Do you know that birthday? It wasn't like I went for any birthday. I just kept praying throughout. So I left them after a while thinking, let me not use mine to disturb you. Let me go back into my space. So I went back into my space. This is day three. I'm still speaking in tongues, praying. So as I'm about to, it's I think maybe around three, I'm about to pick up the children from school and the Holy Spirit gives me a scripture. So I pick up, in fact, I'm in a hurry to leave the house. So I pick up the Bible by the door. I read the scripture. I declare it. I put the Bible just on a seat by the door there and I leave. So I quickly picked the kids up. I came back. I got into the living room. When I got into the living room, I told my daughter then, I said, please get me water. So she goes into the kitchen and the next thing I heard, mommy, fire. So I, I ran and this is, she's 12 now. So imagine years ago, how little she was. <laughs> so I got to the kitchen. Apparently for some reason, there was so much smoke in the kitchen, but it was contained in it. So I, you couldn't have noticed in any part of the house. Mm-hmm. Imagine. <laughs> yeah. And so... We got to, as I opened the place, do you know, for some reason, the electric, I think by the microwave, had sparked and burnt, and burnt till it burnt and sat on the, the fire sat on the gas cylinder. Mm. So imagine what would have happened if that cylinder blew up. Mm. This is a gas cylinder. Fire is burning on top of it. In fact, even me, the adults, I could not get into that kitchen. The smoke was so thick. I had to tell my daughter, just take your brother and run. She was so little, but she had the sense of urgency in my voice and she ran. And you know, the, my son was still struggling, ran with, with her brother. And then where I stood by the door, very far from where the fire was, I took a bucket of water and I was like, blood of Jesus. Because I knew there was no way I could reach <laughs> the thing. Mm-hmm. I don't, how, as I poured the water from the door, if I tell you how far the place was, he quenched the fire. Mm. But even me till now, I know that I wasn't the one that quenched that fire. Yeah. Because even if you tell me to throw something, it's not like I can throw it far. But the fact was, someone might ask that, okay, what if you didn't pray? Do you think, do you think it's your prayer that made? Yes, I'm telling you as a matter of fact, that because I had prayed truth yeah. till I got peace, maybe would have gotten there, my daughter would open that door and oxygen will fuel it and it will blow. I don't want to think what will happen to a little girl. The same way God has given you a contract, he has given you a job, he has given you an appointment, he has sent you a helper, you know, a helper, and you just have that feeling that something is wrong and you are not praying, you're just like, "Ah, I don't know, why am I even thinking of this person? Why am I thinking of this person? Don't learn the hard way. Don't learn the hard way this year. Pray true. Do not be the foolish virgins this year. Have enough oil. Pray it through. Yes, other people can join you to declare. But if you want to see the will of the Father, if you really love the Father and you are after his heart this year, you will pray like never before. So that that's which the Lord wants to happen will start happening. Do you know God is actually waiting for us even beyond our personal lives to pray for nations of the world and see it happen. And meanwhile, we are waiting for God. They don't say, why, if God is here, why will all these things be happening? God said, Satan is the God of this world, yeah? 
Yeah. But when Jesus came, he reconciled us with the Father. So he expects us to go back to our place of dominion where we can start to declare things. Jesus saw things he didn't want. He shifted them. He saw the fig tree. You, you are supposed to be fruitful. You are not fruitful. You know, you die, the thing died because Jesus Christ noticed that he was supposed to be fruitful and he didn't provide food. Jesus could have looked at it and said, it was a lesson to us. He could have looked at this fig tree and just said, oh, no fruit. Let's look for fruit elsewhere. And that's the attitude of a lot of us. You see things happening in your sphere of influence. You are not getting up to do anything. Even in the place of prayer or you yourself saying, Lord, what do you want me to do? Is there a technique? Is there just that witty invention that you need to come forth in this sector to make this thing happen? I'm ready. I'm willing to collect it. And even when God has given you, because for some, God has given you an idea, which is something that would establish the kingdom of our father. But you do not have energy the currency to make it happen. Everything is resisting you because you are not praying. You now say, I've declared over it. Have you taken time out to fast and pray? No, have you taken, I remember um, Reverend Emmanuel Opera talking about his testimony of how his father, his father, you know, is a good man that prays. They do morning devotion. They, you know, he will say, you know, my hands are clean. I don't do any evil to anyone. You know, he said upon that, six of his children died. Out of 10. This is, do you understand? Because when you sit in the place where you are not generating power, it's just like the saying that when you are not growing, you are dying. Yeah. When you are not growing, you are dying. The same place, in the place of power, when you are not amassing power, when current is not building, current is dissipating. So forget that you are prayed in 1962 when you were in university, you were a prayer warrior. So that prayer has worked for you over the years. If your power bank is empty, start to generate it now. Mm. This January is the time where you generate it like, like never before. For some people, you have had the opportunity to stay home. Something has happened and you think, oh my God, you, you know, things are not rolling the way you ought to roll. Please seize that opportunity. Take it as an opportunity to do like never before. Take it as an opportunity to do the will of the Father. Um, please, mute, please, mute, please, mute, please, mute, please mute her from your end. I think um, maybe she's having an encounter with God. Hallelujah. Amen. You know, so I just, we need to get to that prayer, to that part of prayer. He said until he got up one day, he said by the time he buried his younger sister, I think by the time he buried his younger sister, he said something broke in him. And then he took 40 days fasting and prayer. He said by the time it was done, the Lord revealed to him what was happening. He went to his father and told him what the Lord told him. He said his father knew he was God because the things in the secret place that they had told them as boys, you know, the siblings of the father knew. Only them knew and you were not supposed to repeat it to another man. He knew it. Because when you are praying, the Lord opens secrets to you. The Lord does not hide from you. Because he sees you as a worthy partner, a partner that he can that can be in, that he can trust to say, wake up and pray for this person. If he can't trust you, he's not going to give you assignment. So when people ask me, okay, how do I get to the next level of my assignment? I tell them it's by praying and by obedience. Because the more you pray, the more the Lord can trust you. The Lord can trust you with another person, knows that you will wake up and pray for them like you are praying for yourself. And he said he got to a place of prayer. By the time he prayed, you know, the Lord gave them instructions. Part of it was to change their names and do different things. By the time they were done, they stopped dying. Till date, they've not died. He said years later, by the time he went back to his village, they were having something. And then he just felt the urge to lead them to prayer. You know, just sinners prayer. Anybody who wants to give their life. He said one of those strong people that they will call his strong men, one of the uncles, that that one said he wants to give his life. So he gave his life. After giving his life, he gave him Bible. He now went to greet him. People were shocked in the family that this strong man, he gave his life. He said, when he went to meet him, the man now said, I've been wanting this opportunity to give my life to your God. And then this guy goes on to explain what happened in their own meeting. That when the family gave their life to Christ, their gods decided that they would be cursing them until they wiped them out. Hmm. So they didn't know they were targets. And believe me, you, as long as you have Christ, you are not a friend of the enemy. <laughs> And he says, you know, the devil is like a roaring lion. He's going around like a roaring lion, right? Looking yeah. for who he may devour. That means looking for who will give him permission to devour them. When you don't carry power, you are giving him permission to devour you. 
When you are not praying, you are giving information to devour you. Do you understand? When you are not growing, you are giving him permission to devour you. And permission to devour you means death. It might be death in your workplace, the works of your hand, your sphere of influence. It might be anything that is eating. It's not just you as a person. They like to reduce you to nothing before they take you out. He said at the end of the day, this guy said every year they will go into their shrine and the chief priest or their priest would, would curse their family and just be calling their name and cursing their family. And he kept dying like that. He said, but when he got to a point, by the time he took that 40 days, they didn't know he took 40 days. But in their own meeting, this was what happened. The first chief priest went in, died after calling their name. The second one went into the shrine, died. They appointed another one. The third one went into the shrine, died. The fourth chief priest got into the shrine and said, their God said they shouldn't mention the name of their family again in this, in this shrine. When you generate energy, you will get to a point where you are too hot to handle. You are too hot to handle. Mm-hmm. We see the supernatural. When you say, oh Lord, let the supernatural be my natural terrain. It means you are giving God permission to invade your territory. It means you are going to stand up in prayer, to partner with God. You are going to stand up in prayer, to call to be what God has said should be. So beyond just your personal self, I want us to, If we forget everything, please don't forget. Get up. Get up. Get up this year. Don't wait for anybody. Pray fast. Give. Listen to the voice of the Father. He's waiting for you. Don't wait for him. He has done his part. He's waiting for you to do your part. We are delaying things just by not getting up, just by not becoming the Esther. Imagine if Esther did not become queen. Vashti will be there. Mordecai will just come and advise them, you know what, wipe out these people. And they wipe them out. Then Esther will be crying in her quarters. That's if she has not died. I'm just, you know, putting it in modern time now. She will be crying. Maybe she would have checked Instagram. She will see that they killed all her people. They will just put hashtag, so-so, the killing of 10,000. And then she will now start crying. Where is God in all this? And the Father, in the Bible says that we do not have a God that is not touched by the pain of our infirmity. <laughs> that means he's pained as we are pained. But we are the ones causing him pain when we do not get up Can to realize who he has called us to be and what we mm-hmm. should do and do something about it. Yeah, we'll get it. I'm standing here. Um, I think we'll that's Sister it. Lily. Please mute yourself. You I'm know, so, sorry. Oh my God. so we need to get to that point, and that's what we are, He has called us to do today. So, even as God has given us who we are supposed to be, for those that don't know who they are supposed to be or what they are or what position they hold in the grand plan of the Father, even if it's just this year, even if you are not saying, No, I'm not someone that will ask for 20 years, even if it's just this year, please, in the place of prayer, go and ask the Father. Your Father is not someone that will keep quiet and not answer you, He will answer you. Believe and receive believe that he speaks to you and you will hear him and god is activating even gifts to help us within this season dynamic gifts powers of ages to come but how can you entrust it into your hands if you are not a praying people if your if your heart is not after what god wants you to do if your heart is not after who god wants you to become for his purpose and the purpose of the kingdom of god so i would want us to pray that even the esters would arise the Deborahs, let them arise. We read them and read about them a lot in the scripture. You know, people talk about Deborah, how, how you know she defeated them, how he, you know the, the warriors would not have gone if she wasn't there and she's a woman. Is she not a woman like us? But she knew who she was. She knew who she was and she did not back down when it was time. She could have given them a message and just gone and said, you know, the men should go. But these men were waiting for her. And so she went with them. And there are so many women in the Bible who did marvelous things. Women who went with Jesus. Women who even God, in, Jesus healed them. And in the ministry of Jesus, there were a lot of women giving on to him. They experienced Jesus and they knew that, you know what, we are financiers of the kingdom. Mm-hmm. This is what we are doing. This is what we are going to do. Hence the song that people say, you know those songs when we need to that they will sing that um, when Jesus came, that the men went over the, the tree. <laughs> We used to sing it when we were little. I can't remember the song that the men went under the tree, but Jesus, the women, they were the ones that came out. 
<laughs> now we're not casting as passion on the women. I'm just remembering the men, pardon me. I'm just remembering the song. But it just goes to tell us that as women, you have a place, you have a role to play. Yeah. God is calling us. So we need to find out what is the purpose of God in this grand plan. I always say there's only one plan, which is the plan of God, just God's plan. But there are so many faces to that plan and so many sides to it. Where do I fit in? What has he called me to be? How do I become that? How do I align this year? Because in your obedience is what God has even accorded to you. God will finance that which he has sent you to do. A lot of us are not in the grand plan of the father because imagine an ambassador. You're going to, I'm ambassador of America to Nigeria. You come here. Do you think they will not pay you? You're an extension of their arm here. But a lot of time, imagine if the ambassador decides that, you know what, Nigeria, it seems that um, they love Chinese products. I better leave this ambassadorship for a few years and quickly go and be bringing in products. Do you think they will call him and say, well, you really tried. At least you, you went there on mm-hmm. our behalf. <laughs> it's not possible. <laughs> the same way, when we get before God, he's going to ask us what we did. He's not going to ask me, for instance, that um, did you, let me see, did you do the work of the evangelist well? <laughs> it's not that he's not telling me to evangelize. I have to evangelize just like every other person. But he's going to ask me for the souls that he puts in my hands. He's going to ask me for those assignments he gave me in media, in events, in ministry. Do you understand? What did you do with the prophetic gift? What did you do with your pastoral gift? But if I get there and decide, you know, it seems that um, Pastor Adeline's assignment is looks more popular. After all, it's the work of God. Let me just do it myself. And I start doing your assignment fervently. For the next 30 years, I even help people. Yes, I might have helped people. Imagine getting over there. Imagine getting over there and they now say, you have not started. You didn't even step to phase one of what I wanted you to do. God forbid. It will not be our portion in Jesus' name. Amen. So this year, please, let us arise from the place of dormancy. Let us arise into the place of prayer and partnership with the Father. Because if you really get to that point where God wants you to get up and get into, the enemy, I said it, I think was it the last meeting I joined, I said, we ourselves should be principalities and powers and terrors to the kingdom of darkness. Mm -hmm. You should enter a place and they are afraid. Mm -hmm. And they are afraid. But you can never get there if you are not a praying person. You can't. They have their own chance. People can be shedding blood in one place and getting power. But you see, the ultimate blood was already shed for us on the cross of Calvary, which is the blood of Jesus, the Mm -hmm. blood of divinity. Some people have even forgotten that communion table. They're just like, hey, when we get to church next Sunday, we will take it. Maybe one of those Sundays when they are doing Thanksgiving service, they will take it. How about you also discern the bread and take it with your family? How about you study the covenant of God so that you really understand who you are and what he has given you? He has given you the blood of divinity. I remember walking into a meeting and I literally saw a portal open and the blood of Jesus just pouring down just pouring down and going everywhere. And I thought to myself, it gave me a realistic view of what the blood is, like a stream. And since that day, as I'm going into places, I'm seeing the blood of Jesus flowing over me, flowing and flowing Mm -hmm. around where I am. But you can't get that understanding until you really go into it and find out what, what is this? What does this really mean to me? Because all these things, yeah, they are actually supposed to help you Become what you are supposed to be. And this becoming, is not because of you and I. It's not just because, oh, it's your family should eat. This becoming is because God has a particular plan that he has put in motion that it takes you to unlock. Mm. Not because you in yourself, you are awesome, amazing, all that by yourself. No, it's because God has planned that you will do a particular thing. And if you don't do it, it's a shame. Mm. Because you'll get there and then we will not get there and God will now say, oh, you see, I just wanted you to pray and carry power. You see, I would have sent you. There was this little boy I would have sent to you that you would have prayed for. His life would have changed. And this guy would have become a you know, minister of the gospel and brought in a million souls. And those dividends of a million souls would have been yours. God forbid that we'll hear such stories when we get there in Jesus' name. Amen. So Amen. this is a season for us to stand up and realize who we are. 
believe me, if you stand up today and start praying like never before, taking advantage of all the weapons of warfare that the Lord has given us and hearing from the Father and obeying, I'm sure by the time I speak to you half of this year, you will not be the same person that I knew mm. January 1st. And that is what I pray for all of us. And that is what I pray that will happen as we get up in yes. Jesus' name. Amen. 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 Um, before I even hand over, because I wrote this, I think maybe, you know, two days ago when the Lord said, you know, when I was, I, I was just preparing and I thought to myself, what was I going to say? I think because we're in the middle of fasting and prayer. So we have prayer cruises in the morning. We have like a six months fast. So we have prayer, you know, a cruise in the morning for three hours and in the evening. So in between, I was thinking, <laughs> I still have to prepare. And so I told myself, okay, the Lord just gave me a word and, and this scripture that I prepared tonight. And he says to tell you, I don't know who the person is. He says, George. He said to tell you that George, that I have saved George. He said, why are you worrying about George? I have saved him. I have saved George. I don't know who George is. Maybe it's your husband, your brother, your son. Well, he said to tell you, I have saved George. Mm-hmm. He said, so don't worry about it. Just keep praying. I have saved him. Mm-hmm. And, you know, the father is just establishing the fact that there are so many things he has done. So many things. And he wants us to key into it. He wants us to key into it. And I just want to, before I hand over to you, woman of God, um, I hope I'm free to just mention a few things. Yeah. Um, Sister Leah, I don't know why she's muting.